Agito will help you manage the life cycle of contracts and other documents, automate document drafting, efficiently build custom applications, collaborate and negotiate contracts, digitally sign documents, and improve your performance. Each Legito component works together seamlessly to provide a powerful solution. Legito is a no-code, enterprise-ready, and fully customizable platform. Let's get started with a quick high-level overview. Legito Document Lifecycle Management will let your organization easily create document workflows. Legito will make sure that everybody follows the correct process. That includes internal and external sharing, approvals, document changes, and reminders. Document drafting automation allows your experts to efficiently build your templates using Legito's unique AI-powered template editor that suggests logical dependencies. Selections and inputs may be created contextually inside Legito Smart Documents. Data from Legito Smart Documents are automatically extracted. Legito Objects is a rapid, out-of-the-box way to build customized applications that meet your business needs. Increase your automating power exponentially by creating objects such as client and vendor management lists, tailor-made case management tools, property reports, customizable knowledge repositories, and countless other possibilities. Use your Legito workspace to collaborate and negotiate either Legito Smart Documents or Microsoft Office Documents. Legito has all the features you would expect. Track changes, compare, comments, real-time conversations, notifications, and so much more. Use Legito Sign embedded into your Legito workspace to digitally sign contracts and other documents with your counterparties. Additional e-signature providers such as Adobe Sign or DocuSign are also integrated to your workspace. Legito tracks all events and actions in your workspace, as well as all choices and data in Legito Smart Documents. Legito then analyzes this structured and categorized data to give you valuable insights into your documents, projects, and processes. Legito is more than software. Once you sign up with Legito, you're joining a community. We want you to get the most out of your investment. We offer additional resources free of charge to help you get better acquainted with top tips and tricks to utilize Legito's robust products and achieve more with Legito thanks to industry insights and best practice advice. Our step-by-step -step interactive courses will educate you quickly to become a Legito Power user and our categorized and detailed knowledge base will empower you to confidently tackle any situation. Let's connect to explore how Legito can help you achieve more and reach your goals faster. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the first webinar back. Um, if you've come back after the summer to a heap of work and it feels like that rush is already starting up to Christmas, you've got a heap of work to do, then hopefully today's webinar is going to give you one possible route to alleviating that. Uh, we're going to talk about self-service, helping your colleagues and indeed your suppliers and your customers to do more for themselves. Um, I'm going to start with the usual introductions. Uh, some of you will have heard from me before. I sometimes chair these webinars. Uh, my name is Charles Drayson. My role at Legito is Chief Community Officer, but that's not actually the capacity in which I'm speaking to you today. Uh, I'm here today as the commercial director of another software company called Enate. And um, my role with Legito is it's like a side hustle, if you like, which I pursue because I really enjoy the world of automation and I'm interested in what they're doing. But before I got to know Legito at Enate, I was putting in place a contract management system, uh, which ultimately we aborted. Um, we aborted it because it just got really complicated. And frankly, it was getting really hard for me to do my day job and CNN to getting that in getting it live. Uh, then, of course, I got to know Legito and it seemed right that I gave Legito go in the innate business. And the other thing to mention is that I'm not a Legito consultant. So this was actually my first hands on experience of using Legito as a product, which has been great. Um, What's probably worth saying is that Mark Settle, who you'll have seen on previous webinars, who is a Legito consultant, helped me along the way, just like he would with any other Legito customer. So this is a bit of a double act today. I'll introduce you to Mark shortly. Uh, most of you will have heard from him before. 
Um, but we're going to show you what was our first build project for Enate. And that is a non-disclosure agreement. Now, um, non-disclosure agreements are really common for most organizations. Let me tell you about the, the use case for this so you can see why we wanted to do it. And actually, that reminds me, this, is a, this isn't a demo of something we've built artificially for this webinar. What I'm going to show you is actually something we've deployed in a real company for real use. It's in, my use, it's in use at my company at Enate. Uh, we're actually going to show it on a duplicate workspace. Otherwise, you'd be seeing all the confidentiality agreements that we've actually got for real, which plainly wouldn't be fair. Uh, but everything you see is in real live use. And if you'd like after this webinar to actually use it for yourself, as one of our customers would, and you can experience this, then you can drop us an email and we'll give you a link and you can see what it feels like to, to be a customer. So let's talk about the, the use case. Um, as I said, non-disclosure agreements, really common thing. Most organizations need them and we're no different. We get quite a few requests for this. And my role at Innate leaves me responsible for all contracts and contract related processes. And the problem with NDAs, as they're commonly known, is that we, we get them and they sort of interrupt your work and the task switching consequence of that will probably be known to most of you. They don't add a lot of value to the business, to be honest, but at the same time, you've got to do them right. Um, they're still binding contractual documents at the end of the day. So there is a certain amount of process that, that goes with them. Um, so as well as the frequency with the, of the requests, one of the problems we had is that they're all handled manually. They tend to come in by email. Um, sometimes colleagues email me and then introduce me to a customer or a supplier. Invariably, those emails don't have all the information I need to actually create an NDA. We have the additional hurdle, which most people have, which is, do we use our standard NDA or do we have to use the other party's standard NDA? And all of those things involve sort of emails backwards and forwards. And of course, my colleagues who are usually anxious to get on with a project because it's with a customer or supplier, all the time they're sort of badgering me to get on with it, which is fair enough. So what we wanted was to make it easier for those things to happen with the minimal involvement from me. But crucially, I've got to stay in control. And that's where we're going to use the self-service facility. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you exactly what we built. Uh, you're going to see it run. Mark is going to play the role of one of our customers. And I'm going to play my usual role at Enate. It's going to be a bit of screen switching. So if we uh, get in a pickle from sometimes being on the wrong screen and I have to ask my colleagues to switch screens, bear with me. So I'm, I'm commercial director at Enate. Mark is our customer. You'll see the process happen from beginning to end for real. Uh, and then afterwards, Mark will step back in to talk through some of the additional features that he's more fluent on. And he'll talk about what we use to, to build this. So I'm going to hand over to Mark in just a second, just to reiterate, Mark is one of our Ligito consultants. He's responsible also for uh, North America operations, although he's currently uh, working in, in, in Europe with the Ligito the team there, currently over here. So Mark, over to you. All right, thanks a lot, Charles. So before we actually dive into any demonstration of the workflow, what we uh, wanted to discuss first is uh, when we, as we kicked off this project, this was actually a, a great first project. So when we're working with potential clients or with clients on how to start with an automation tool such uh, as Legito, the, the content you want to choose, you want to be uh, repetitious, high value, uh, that's going to bring value to your business. So what we want you to do is, is have content that you, you use regularly that's going to add value. So this is a, just a great use case for innate because of all the reasons that Charles just listed. And so Charles had a, a great word uh, NDA with uh, well-defined uh, styles and formatting and structure uh, in that document. And so it was relatively easy to import into Lugito. Uh, along the way, as we talked about the, the workflow, Charles is uh, an experienced uh, person in business like this. So he had a very detailed workflow of, of what he needed to have happen for the business. And he sent that over to me. And as I reviewed it, I thought, well, this is uh, fairly complex for what we feel like we might be able to accomplish in the system. Not complex in the sense that uh, uh, it was overly detailed because the business things that need to happen need to happen, but that as we put it into the system and the, and the things that could happen 
with stages and notifications within Legito that that would actually be simplified for him. And so our first step was to review that NDA content and to review the workflow and build that in a way that was going to be meaningful uh, for Charles to use in the business. So Charles, I think uh, we'll have you bring that on the screen just a little bit and talk about where that came from and, and, and where some of those uh, points were. Okay. So um, my colleagues, we, I should be sharing my screen now if my colleagues could switch. Um, so what you can see on the screen is our non-disclosure agreement. It's in Word. We won't dwell on all the details, but it probably looks like the non-disclosure agreement that's in use in your organization. Don't worry if you can't see all the detail of it. There are a few things in here that vary. Uh, we've got a couple of companies, for example, so we need to decide which one. We have to put in details of contracting with. Um, there's some variables in here, such as how long the agreement goes on for. And of course, at the end, we've got the thing signed. But it's it's a pretty simple doc, uh, already styled in Word. And, and you're not here to learn about NDA, so I'm going to press on with the next thing I want to show you. So this is what I actually shared with Mark at the beginning. This was, I sat down to say, right, what is our process for NDAs? And I initially thought this is going to be really quick and easy. Um, so I sat down to do this. I, I would have done it as a flowchart if I wasn't a word orientated person, but but I'm not. So I did it in Word. I'm just going to scroll through it. And as you can see, ironically, the actual workflow process ended up being longer than the flipping MDA did. Um, and so I was a bit bothered by this. Um, the sorts of things that, that complicated it were, for example, not knowing, you know, whether we were going to be using our standard, or whether we're going to be using a uh, the standard of the other of the other side. So I effectively over engineered this. And the first learning point for me on this, and this is despite being somebody who has done some automation before, is um, I made some assumptions that turned out I didn't need to make. And actually, when Mark got a hold of this, he said, no, it doesn't need to be that complicated. Um, first thing is, I just assumed we would effectively need like two workflows running in parallel, one for what happens when a customer is prepared to use our NDA and another one for what happens when a supplier wants to use theirs. Whereas actually we found we were able to combine both of them in one process, which worked really well. Um, the other thing is that I effectively documented in here a load of things which are just sort of natively part of the way Legito works. So there's stuff I spelt out that didn't really need to be doing. And so Mark could effectively ignore and say, well, yeah, of course, that that's what happens. Um, the other thing which we found was that Legito natively knows who's using it. It knows whether it's interacting with a Legito user, in other words, one of my colleagues at Enate, or whether it's dealing with an external party. And it's worth saying that, of course, external parties can interact with it. Otherwise, this whole self-service thing couldn't work so let's show you now what we what we built so um i'm going to mark will take the next point and just a reminder he is effectively now going to switch into the role of one of our customers if you get any questions during this process we've got the usual facility to ask questions and we'll we'll take them at the end uh, but we'll run through the process so i'll drop my screen and we'll go back to mark Excellent. Thanks, Charles. Uh, so while my uh, screen share comes up here, you'll see what I have on the screen is an email that I received actually from one of uh, Charles' colleagues at uh, Innate as a test. Uh, and in this email, you can see that Chris, uh, who's the VP over customer success there, was able to put a link that I, as the customer, will be able to click to complete an NDA quickly. Uh, so I can simply click that link and navigate to it. Uh, to not log in as myself, I'm just going to open that incognito uh, and that opened on my other screen. So we'll put it up here. So here I have uh, the NDA that's been prepared in Legito, and I'm simply presented with a questionnaire that I need to complete as the user. So what we're going to suppose here is I work at a company called Blue Sky Limited. So we'll, we'll use that as our company name. Uh, I'm just going to put myself in as the contact. So the first thing it's asking for is the legal name. You can see here that Charles has built some required fields into this template as well. So uh, you can see this is red and outlined telling me it's required. I have to fill it out. Of course, you can't have an NDA without an organization to execute that NDA with. So we'll do Blue Sky Limited, LTV. And you can see 
Uh, in Legito, you can even pre-fill some of the values. So you can see here that I can uh, have a purpose of the NDA already defined, but it's an editable field, so I can make changes if I choose to. And it actually has a couple of uh, entities that you can actually execute this with, one for Asia PAC and, and one for Europe. So you can see here, I can choose which of those entities I want to execute this NDA with. Uh, and then you can see here, I actually have a choice. Uh, can I uh, just use the innate NDA and accept their NDA? But sometimes companies require you to work with their content. And so Charles has actually built into this input the ability to provide my own. If I choose that selection, we're not going to leave this selection, but if I choose that selection, I might get some comments on why. And then down at the bottom here, I'll have an option to actually upload uh, an attached file uh, that would be my NDA. And we'll comment on that later in the process here, but that would actually leave this third party attached NDA into Legito so that Charles can run the same approval workflow uh, in Legito for that document, whether it's coming from a third party document or they're choosing the innate NDA. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it back to, we'll use the innate NDA here and I'll provide my contact information. And I'll just be the president of Blue Sky. So you can see here, even inside the form, Charles can provide some prompts of what's gonna happen next. Uh, so I, here at the bottom of the form, he's, this is when you're done, click save, and you can close the browser and you're good to go. Uh, but as we're using the innate NDA below that input form, I see a little bit more input uh, content that's specific to the innate NDA uh, than it's now prompting me to complete. So I might choose what's the date of the NDA, can leave that blank. We'll go ahead and choose today's date. We'll put in a short name for the company of Blue Sky. And then we will leave the registration number out in this case. Uh, we'll, we'll just type in an address of 123 Blue Sky Road. And we can even choose what's the duration of this. Do I want an unlimited? Do I want it to be three years, five years? And all of that's going to go to Charles and allow him to review it and even modify it if necessary. So as the user now, I'm I'm done with what I wanted to fill out. There's no other input fields. I could scroll through this document content and review it. Uh, but really what I'm going to do now is save it for the instructions. And you can see when I save this document, it says, hey, it was successfully saved, you're all done. Uh, so now we'll turn it back over to Charles to show how his workflow shows after this has been completed. Okay, so uh, you're back with me now in my role as uh, commercial. Uh, if my colleagues could activate the time sharing. So this is my uh, innate dashboard. Um, you can see it's branded. As I say, this is a duplicate copy of a real life deployment. Uh, it looks like I've got a notification up here, uh, which tells me sort of various things that are coming in and changing. I'm just, just going to refresh my screen actually, because I had this in line before, um, before Mark was talking. Um, Fresh in at the top of my list here, you see an NDA for Blue Sky Limited, Blue Sky Limited, and it's an NDA request that's right at the beginning of the process. So uh, any of my colleagues who might be wanting me to get on with this, who have access to this, uh, could see that it's just arrived as a request. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is to mark that I'm now going to have a look at it. So I'm just going to move it to internal review. And I'm going to open this item to have a bit of a look through it. There's some data in here about where it's come from and that sort of thing. But fundamentally, the first thing I'm going to do is open it to have a look. OK, so I'm just seeing exactly what Mark has put in. Uh, I read through it. Uh, one of the things which uh, I can do, I won't flick too many screens because it will just get confusing and take too long. But one of the things I would do is, for example, search to see whether we already had an innate for ND8 for uh, Blue Sky Limited. That happens surprisingly often, actually. I reckon about one in 10 of the requests I get at innate are for companies that already have um, a an NDA with us. And one can search, if I just switch over here, actually, and I go into uh, Manage Documents, if I actually do a search and I say, start to just type in blue, um, you'll start to see it already narrows down my list and looks like uh, looks like Mark and I have done a previous one actually for, for demo purposes. So we can see on here whether I've previously had um, a request for the same company, but let's assume I haven't. Um, I'm reading through here, looking at the inputs Mark puts in and up here, 
nothing particularly controversial. Looks like they're ready to use our NDA. But I see that Mark has put down the desired duration of the NDA to three years. And if I scroll down to the preview of the agreement, this clause 3.3, I can see is reflecting that. It says the agreement will last for three years. But let's just say that for some reason, best known to me, I want it to be continuing indefinitely. I disagree with Mark on that. So I so say, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to override that decision. I'm going to have it continue until terminated. I'm um, sure Mark won't mind, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save the document. Now, what I do next, I effectively have some choices on. I can start interacting with Mark by email or I can call him, whatever I, whatever I wish to do. But I've just created a new version of the document. Now, what I'm going to do at this stage is assume that I've sent this over to Mark to, and we weren't going to go through lots of iterations. You'll be pleased to hear of Mark reviewing it. But let's say that I've just sent this over to Mark. Say, look, it really needs to be indefinite, not uh, not continue until terminate, not uh, three years. So I've just moved it on to say with client for review. So any of my colleagues thinking is Charles getting on with this will now know that Mark has got this for for review. Let's say that Mark's come back to me and he's he's happy enough for that. Again, it could be could just simply be a call or an email. We're not we're not forcing the client to do everything through Enate. And I think that's worth saying at the moment because trying to force another company to use your processes entirely and ignore all their normal ways of working is frankly often doomed to failure. So we're not precluding normal modes of interaction. But what I'm going to do next, beg your pardon, wrong way is do, 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 go back into my sorry get my fluency wrong here i'm going to assume that he's correct and we're going to get ready to sign this sign this document as the next day so mark's agreed and i'm going to move it on for for signature so the document's still showing on screen i've moved the process on to signature over here and a new option has cropped up um the Gito menu options tend to be um interactive like that they sort of change themselves to to suit the occasion and next stage is to start signing so i'm going to click that now this option to sign with legito sign is what's here now legito sign if you haven't heard of it is just like a lot of the other digital signature solutions adobe sign docusign the only difference is that this one is integrated it's free it doesn't cost anything and in fact using the Gito sign is going to allow us to switch off the solution which we currently use at enate so yeah i want to sign with legito sign I've got some choices up here. Um, sometimes you parties are a bit fussy about in which order they sign. They say you've got to sign first or we'll sign first. And I could use this consecutive signing box to sort of change the order in which people sign. Um, these are the signatory parties. The names and addresses have gone in there automatically. They've taken from the data we had earlier on, but we could change them if we wish to. But I'm happy with those and I'm going to click send. OK, so what happens on the next page is something you may be familiar with for the digital signature solutions. Here's the agreement previewed at the bottom is where the signatures take place. Now I can you see there's various fields over on the left. I could drag them into place just like you might have seen with, say, DocuSign. Um, but actually, this template has been built so that the placeholders are already there. I don't actually need to do anything. So I can just skip straight over this, go to the next stage. And what we've effectively done is we've started a DocuSign, uh, not a DocuSign, a Legito sign envelope. So that has now effectively left my system and it's gone over to Mark for Mark to um, Mark to sign. So if we now go back to Mark. All right. Thank you, Charles. So now I've received an email, as you can see telling me that the NDA is awaiting my signature. So similar to what you might get in a DocuSign, I can actually review the PDF or I can open that document to take action and sign on it. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that again and bring that on the screen. And you can see that this opens uh, Legito sign on the screen with the document content. And I'm simply gonna read through and go to my placeholder where I need to sign. And there's my signature field. You can see the date is pre-populated for me automatically. So I can simply add in my signature and sign this document. Actually click the sign button. 
and then it signs that document. When I'm done, I just click confirm. And what will happen is it'll tell me, thank you, you're all done. Uh, you can close this browser window. I have my email open off of the screen here, but I'll get an email once Charles has signed this document as well that will have the final signed PDF attached to it mm -hmm. for me to be able to review. In fact, there I get it now, so let me open it and bring it up to the screen here. So here you can see now I've got a completed signed document tells me the process is complete and I can open up this PDF and, and see the final signatures from both myself and Charles. So I've got an executed uh, document that I can now save and store on my end as well. Uh, and for Charles, of course, it's gonna be saved right into uh, Lugito sign for him in his Lugito workspace. So what I'd like to do now is show you a little bit of some of the features and functionality. So I'm going to stop in my role as the third party signing this document and just be my uh, Lugito resource here for a moment and demonstrate in the innate uh, workspace uh, some of the features and functionalities that are there. So a few things that I uh, will show to you, um, in fact, we would wait typically for this to come back. Uh, I'm just going to mark it as complete. But I've got now uh, a number of complete NDAs in my system. And when I log in, I've got widgets along the top that will show me uh, what those values are. The dashboard in Legito is customizable. So for Charles and his other resources that might log in uh, to view this and, and understand what's going on with NDAs, there's kind of just really three stages that they're most interested in seeing. How many requests are there? Charles is specifically interested in that. Uh, what's in review? What are we waiting on? So whether it's a review from Charles or the client, both of those kind of show up in this review stage. And then how many are actually executed and completed? And so I can see all of those at a glance uh, when I log into Legito. And then below that, I can see my recent documents. Uh, dashboards are configurable in Legito. I could show more. Uh, I'm an admin, so I can actually see when users log in and log out and access the documents, whether they be the external user or uh, the internal users and actions that are taken. For non-admins, they're just going to see their actions in this timeline. There are a lot of other pieces of information that could be displayed on this dashboard as well. Uh, and I can have multiple types of dashboards uh, in Legito. And so the, the configuration that we chose here was to keep things simple for Nate. So you can see I can show just my recent documents. Uh, in the NDA requests. I'm not even showing a template to start an NDA internally because the, the desire here really is that always be driven by that third party link. Uh, so for me, I might go to the templates page to start a template or I might go to manage documents. So just to give you an example of these widgets, they are also uh, click through. So if I wanna see the NDAs that are currently in review, I can just click on that. It'll actually take me right to the Manage Documents page and allow me to see all of the documents that are in review. Uh, along with that, let me point out a few things. So the first thing I'll pick, uh, this is the older Blue Sky, not the one we just did that was here, but I just want to expand that and show you a couple of things. The document record that's assigned to this document is configurable as well. So for NDAs, we only needed a few pieces of information. This one hasn't been signed. There's no signing date in here, but you can see I've got the agreement date. This one's from back on September 8th, the counterpart, counterparty name was Eric Blue, the duration was five years. So at a glance, we can look at just the document record and get some information. That also gives me the ability to, at some point, if I want to simply like search on, you know, the five year durations or all of the uh, agreements executed in a certain date, I can use my searching or my filtering uh, to find documents easily. Uh, so like Charles easily found this blue sky duplicate I might also be able to easily report on, well, how many five-year uh, NDAs do I have? Uh, and, and if I'm reporting the expiration as a part of this, I could even search, you know, how many are expiring in the next 30 days and, and get reminders on that. One other nice thing we added into this, and this was really for Charles' use, and we didn't show Charles assigning it as a part of that process, but if he wants to, he can actually assign an innate user contact to this document. So you can see here, I can actually assign myself. Uh, because I'm in this workspace as this contact. And then Charles can also easily search, well, how many of the NDAs has Mark been the contact on? And I can actually come down and go to that innate contact filter I've got and just check Mark Settle. And I can see there are three, actually three that are in the review stage because we had the, the previous filter applied. So we can even clear that out and see there are four because there's one that's complete. Uh, so we can 
really get some value and power in finding uh, our content that's been executed uh, for those NDAs. And so that really enables a lot for Charles both to see uh, data at a view for a document that I have to, need to actually open it up. So if a legal question came to him about, hey, are we good? Or when he's searching for an existing NDA and he sees it, he can see, well, is it still active or not uh, without really having to open the document up. The second thing I want to point out in this document record is the attachment that might have come back. So this innate red table uh, NDA is actually one uh, that was executed as a third party contract. And so the third party actually just attached that file that was their NDA and it shows up just as an, a, a saved file here. So that allows for Charles to have a document record that's exactly the same other than the file attachment uh, for, um, for those third party NDAs. So he can still search and find them and then he can easily open up, you know, download and view that file uh, in Word or, or in PDF if it was a PDF that was attached. He can put the signed document in here. Uh, with Legito Sign, if it was a Word document they provided and you put the data in, you were ready to sign, you can even launch Legito Sign to sign that document from this attachment that gets attached into the document record. So it gives him a lot of value for those third party contracts to use the same workflow, same process uh, from his side for tracking it. All right. So it's just some final pieces I wanted to point out on some of the added value uh, for Charles and, and what Lakito is, is adding. And as you can see, a, a relatively simple workflow when we boiled it down to what Lakito could do for him. Because he could boil those two uh, approaches, third party NDA or one using the innate NDA into the same workflow, it greatly simplified his workflow. So he's only got a number of stages, one process. Uh, and, and then we were able to build that single workflow uh, so that you can easily access it. One nice thing about either the dashboard or the managed documents page, because it is a stage based workflow or process at any time, uh, Charles can get a Kanban view, uh, which is really just a stage view uh, in columns of the workflow. Uh, and that will allow him to easily see at a view where everything is that's currently in various stages. And it's even interactive. So if I want to move the red table one now to with the client, I can actually just drag and drop it and, and move it into that stage in the workflow. Uh, so I can surface the same Kanban view on my dashboard uh, if I want to do that to allow for it to, to be <clears throat> viewable by the user. The last thing here uh, on this Manage Documents page or on the document record that I want to point out, let's just reset and we'll go to our completed uh, NDA from today. I can also share this document with anybody internally. And I could even set up the document to be uh, automatically shared. So I could say for any NDA, I want to automatically share with a group of users. You can see these four users that this is already shared with. These are all users who are admins on this workspace at the moment. Uh, so all of those users are automatically getting access because they're an admin. But I could have a group of users, say legal, uh, that would automatically have all NDAs shared with them. Uh, but if I want to share with another user as well, I could just simply come in and find that user. Uh, we're the only four users uh, on the site at the moment, but I could say find that user and give them a specific set of permissions and share this particular document with them. So I have a way internally to share my document as well as the ability to share it externally. When we think about how I started that document as a third party, that all extends from this ability to share externally. So you can see I can share this specific document externally. Uh, and so you can see in my share options, I can share this document. That's my default behavior for sharing. But there is this ability to share a template. And that's what Charles set up to allow me as a user. I have a template link, which allows me whenever I click that link to start a new NDA. So basically that link could be sent to any third party uh, that Innate wants to send it to and it will kick off that process for creating a new NDA and notify Charles just the way he showed. So this ability to share externally facilitates that third party uh, start of the document uh, on that input form. So those are a few of the pieces that we put together. Finally, I did want to show the workflow that we configured uh, to set up the process uh, that he's using. So I'm just going to go more on the administrative side for a moment into workflows in Legito. And the workflow editor in Legito is very drag and drop and click to configure. 
So if we edit the NDA workflow, we can open that up for edit. And you can see here the workflow that we've configured. So a few things about this, you can see it's simple six stages, a number of arrows going different places. Uh, it would look at quite linear generally, other than the fact that we wanted to have this stage that basically at any stage before it was complete, we could cancel out. So at any point during this process, if Charles says, oh, we're going to drop the relationship with this company, we don't need the NDA anymore, they can just move that NDA rather than deleting it. Maybe they want a history that we almost went down that path. They can move it into this canceled stage. Uh, and, and sometimes you might even add a terminated right that you want to move a, an agreement into once it's no longer active or something like that. But other than that, you can see the, the five stages kind of across this workflow that we saw Charles use and the flows that are in between them. So I can do things like I could have jumped uh, or, or Charles could have jumped directly from his internal review to signature. He didn't have to send it to the client for review. If everything was correct the first time, you can just bypass that step in the workflow. Uh, the signature process, if I click on that stage, you can see there are properties uh, in stages. And so I can control when Charles said, well, this, this button seems to change based on what's happening. This is where that's happening. You can see on this stage, there's an option or a property down here that says start signing. And that actually shows a little icon next to that stage as well. Well, this is the only stage that has that option. So if they want to sign it digitally, the only way to sign it is to get to that signature stage. Uh, and sometimes there might be an actual approval that somebody has to sign off on in between that. You can see I can click on an arrow between stages and add an approval if I wanted. Uh, so I can have some controls in this workflow to make sure there are sign offs and everything that are needed. As Charles and I talked this through, he's really the one running this whole process. So he doesn't have it. He's giving his own approval to his own document. So it didn't make sense to add an approval into the workflow for his own sign off. Uh, but if it was going to another party in the business to review, he could set that type of workflow up and, and get their sign off before it actually went to signature. And so there's a lot of capability here uh, to, to build this workflow to follow the specific business rules uh, that were needed within an eight uh, and their process. Uh, tended to be kind of initiated by the client and mostly driven uh, by Charles, but the stages were important to still give visibility to the rest of the business uh, about where documents were in the workflow. Finally, I'd say uh, you can't have a document once it's signed automatically come back attached into the system and, and move that document into a completed stage. And, and so if I'm using that integration with Lakito sign, uh, then I can send it out for signature. It comes back, it's automatically attached into the record and moved into the complete uh, process for that particular document. Uh, today, we're not going to really talk about template editing unless we get specific questions about it, but no plan to demonstrate that today. Uh, but Charles actually did the majority of the creation of that template in our Legito template editor. So like he said, it was his first uh, time going into the Legito uh, you know, implementation process. And so we supported and helped him in that. And of course he did have questions as he went through that I was able to facilitate and help him with. Uh, but as a uh, experienced uh, automation user, but new to Legito, uh, it was fairly easy for Charles to understand the process for setting up uh, the Legito template and, and use the features there. Uh, so we, we helped uh, provide support, but we didn't do the work for him, which was fantastic. So with that, I might uh, turn it over uh, to Charles for just a little bit of wrap up and, and then we'll get to q and I'm going to take one of the questions now because it might be fresh in people's mind. And I'll, there's a question from Joseph, we're taking a second, um, um, Mark. But uh, Bruce basically was asking about that link and it's worth emphasizing that because that's one of the really useful things. So once we create that link, Bruce, we can put it in an email, which was the example you saw there from my colleague, Chris. He just sent a link in an email. And that might happen if a customer, say, just says, can I, have, you know, we need an NDA and you could reply back saying, here's a link. That link works for all time. We don't, you know, they don't need to come to me and get a special link every time. Otherwise, that would just be another interruption for my working day. But we can also have a link on the website. And actually, that's one of the things I'm going to be doing at Enate shortly. We're actually going to move that link to a section of our website where people can perhaps see it and just you know click on the link and, and execute the process themselves. Uh, they don't have to, you know, don't have to contact us. So it can be shared anywhere, really, email on a website, anywhere that a hyperlink can go, then you can put that, can put that link. Um, so just to 
talk about what I think we, we managed to achieve in this. I mean, it, this was done actually in the context of a Legito trial. I just started it as any other new customer would, uh, signed up for a trial. It doesn't it? They, I went through some of the onboarding help and hence I was able to, to do most of it myself. There were a few of the more advanced things that as Mark says, I, I needed to do. But I genuinely think this is achievable for anybody to do in the course of a trial. And actually, we've got no difficulty. If anyone wants to copy anything we've done on here, it says, yeah, I'll give that a go. Just feel free to copy away. There's there's nothing, you know, NDAs are not exactly uh, proprietary stuff. Um, I'm not holding my, I mean, I am a lawyer, but I'm not giving you legal advice. But if you want to use what we've done, if you want to use the process, share away and contact us afterwards. So what do I think we did here? Well, NDAs are mostly non-controversial. So it's a really good place to, to start for us. And it was fairly straightforward. And if they're completely non-controversial, it can go beginning to end really quick, which minimizes the interruptions for me. The other thing we achieved, though, is I did keep control. There was no way that somebody could foist upon us a request for an NDA that they get all the way to the end without me having at least an opportunity to check that we're ready to do it and to see what they're giving. So all lawyers are control freaks. We don't have to give that up with um, with NDAs. The other key thing is that this has to be realistic and usable. Um, if I launched a process that actually sort of jarred on customers, uh, our sales team would basically would let me do it. Uh, and in fact, I've had a couple of my colleagues in sales sort of test this. And the reason it's usable is we're not forcing a customer to go through some convoluted loop that precludes them you know, using anything, you know, they can still look at the document in Word when they get it their end, they can still email me, they don't have to do everything through Legito, but they can do as much as they like through Legito and they can sign through Legito or not, they could sign by some other means and we could store the signed copy in Legito ourselves later. Um, it's also real life because my colleagues get to use these links without waiting for me. If I happen to be on holiday or something, it doesn't hold them up. We also get all the details we need because although NDAs are pretty simple, there's still some basic stuff we need, like who's it for, what's it for. And we gather all that without me having to, to send more emails. Um, and the other thing is that because customers can preview our NDA, rather than just instinctively saying, oh, can we use you know their version? At least they get to see ours. And if they see it on the screen below and it sort of looks half sensible, which I hope it does, then maybe they'll be tempted to use ours more often. But if they don't, they don't. You know, that's another real world thing here. We're, we're realists. And if customers come to us wanting NDAs, it means they're probably about to do some business with us. Generally speaking, we want to make it easy for them. And if that means using their NDA, well, so be it. We hope not to. Um, so all those things are catered for in the in this process. And at the end of the day, everything is in one place. So we now have one place where all our NDAs are stored for future reference. My colleagues can can look and see what we're doing. They don't have to keep asking me. So that's what I feel we've achieved with this sort of simple first launch into Legito. Obviously, we're gonna we're gonna do more. So um we've got first quite we're gonna do Mark's gonna chair some QA, but Mark, if you want to take the first question from Jason, I think you can see that. Yeah, I believe there's just the one question left. So we had two questions come through. So you've answered one. Uh, I'll answer the other. And if you could share my screen, uh, I'd love to show this on the screen. So the question was, is the, the timeline, does it show the external access to the application? Now, I, I, I have to admit, I only showed timeline in one place. So I'm going to answer the question and show you an additional feature that I didn't show. So I did show on the dashboard this timeline widget that's showing on my dashboard. As an admin, I can see that external party accessing the system. A standard user wouldn't see that. But if we go to that timeline now, you can see even when Charles accessed it, when that external user who was me filling out the form uh, logged in and logged out. So so I can see a little bit of, the, of that as an admin. But I think more, value, but more valuable than that is I really want to know what happened with a specific document. Uh, this, is, this is valuable for admins to see access and things happening uh, across the site. Uh, but I want to see a document. And so a document record, when I expand it, I didn't actually click on this, but there is a timeline associated with every document. So I can click on that timeline for the document that we created today. And you can see there's a timeline down below in, in that document. And you can see actions that I took. You can see actions that Charles took. You can see actions that the external user, who was me, not logged in as me, right, uh, took to send this document uh, in initially. So when I created the draft, when I changed, you know, because it auto changes the owner to Charles, you can see that action here in the, the document, then all the steps Charles took, 
and then the things I did kind of in that latter part of the demonstration. This is very valuable because I can export it to CSV. It's a great audit trail on a document, as well as just we kept this very simple in what Charles needs are, but to mention a feature of Logito, we do have APIs around all of these events that are tracked. And so that facilitates using tools to integrate with Logito that are kind of cloud collaboration tools uh, where you can easily catch a specific event of something that happened in Logito and take action in some other system you use within your business. So I want, uh, you know, when an NDA gets executed, automatically put a record into my content management system or, 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 or contact management system, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, so I really can uh, tie tools together with Legito easily because of the APIs we allow around the events that you see listed down here on the left that are tracked with these document records that get accessed and used uh, inside of Legito. So I appreciate the question, Joseph. I think that was a great one. So we've had a, another one in from Bruce, which I'll take. So um, Bruce is asking about the search facility and he makes the very valid point that, you know, wouldn't it be good effectively if that searching to see if we've got an existing NDA that might have been done by a colleague, if that can happen automatically. So, yeah, that's a good point. So right now that doesn't happen on the unit implementation for the simple reason that if you were to see our actual live database now, we haven't got that many records on it because what we need to do is the next step is move into Legito's document management system, our legacy NDAs. I'm going to let Mark, because Mark's more fluent in the application than I, I'm going to let Mark saying if we had the metadata for our other NDAs, whether that search could be automated. So I'll leave that to Mark in a second. But it's worth recognizing, of course, that whenever you start a new system, you will have some legacy documents. Um, you can put all those into Legito, whether they be scan PDFs or Word documents, and you saw how that might look like. Um, also, what we hope to be demonstrating very soon, I've, I've, I know it's already working, but it's not deployed live yet, is the ability for using an AI engine to automatically extract data from those. So you can imagine for that search request to work, Legito would not only have to have, say, a PDF of a previous Blue Sky uh, NDA, but it would have to have stored, it would have to have recognized digitally that it was Blue Sky. And rather than have someone slavishly retype all the details, uh, if we can use AI to extract things like customer names and durations from an NDA, you can see how that would save a lot of time. And that's something which we'll be uh, talking about in a future session. So. It hasn't happened yet, Bruce, but I'll let if we imagine we had got all those in and and we'd got enough data to make that search worth automating. I'll let Mark comment on whether Legito could do that. Yeah, so you took all the fun out of my response, Charles, by talking about the AI. No, I appreciate you bringing that up. So that is definitely a feature uh, that we'll continue to build on and show in Legito this ability to auto extract data uh, and, and get data out of the documents that need to be added into Legito that that you never had in Legito in the first place. Uh, but kind of going along with that, if, if there are documents coming into Legito from Legito templates, so if I use Charles's NDA uh, to build an NDA in Legito, it, all of the information that's in that document is full text indexed. Uh, so that is all searchable and can be searched from the Manage Documents page. And technically, there's not a built-in feature to do this, but technically you could use some scripts and Legito API to even auto search uh, when that, uh, you know, have a button and a script in the template that would kind of perform that search for you automatically and give you an OK or not, mm. uh, of whether you you have a, a document that exists. Now that's so where that someone like... In the system, you, you could enable a, a way to do that. Sorry to cut across there, Mike. Now, that's where someone, I mean, you mentioned scripts. Now, Legito is fundamentally a no-code application. I'm not a programmer. So that's an example of where me as a customer would say to Mark, look, we want this functionality. Will he write the script? Most of the time, and everything I built on this certainly didn't need any scripts. It was it was pretty much drag and drop and just doing all the sorts of things which any competent user of work could do. But that's an occasion where you would get a Legito consultant who would, you know, as Mark just said, tell you what they could, what they could do. Okay, I don't see any more questions coming up so i think we're coming to the end thank you everybody for joining us just to reiterate if you would like to interact with this demo anymore my email address is coming up on screen now i see if you'd like to interact with this some more and you want one of those links so you can maybe show a colleague what's possible uh, please do um, contact me or mark and we'll be happy to do that if you want to get a legito trial and just copy this and just get going as a, as a first project we're also 
happy to facilitate that. They are free and also the Legito sign is free and available as part of your trial. So there's there's really no barriers just to giving a go. Even if you give it a go and don't like it, switch it off after a month, you know, no, no harm done. That's that is your prerogative. Thank you for joining us. I hope this sort of more interactive one has been uh, has been good. And I look forward to maybe speaking to some of you afterwards if you have any more questions or if not on the next webinar. Goodbye.